Hey Sprocketeers, welcome to a new quest video. This one I'm going to be recording live. As in, it's not live, it's not a live stream, but I am talking to you as I play the game. This is completely new for me, uh, so if it sucks, I'm sorry. But it seemed like it would be good to give you my real reactions, my real thought process live as we go through the process of taking this which is a late war medium tank weighs 30 tons uh, it's got about 200 millimeters of frontal armor it's a typical sprocket late war medium tank only weighs 30 tons but outclasses a main battle tank or at least a first generation main battle tank a 90 millimeter one meter shell met length cannon now I want to know if it's possible for a tank like this, one which is perfectly capable of completing the two late war scenarios in the game, to climb the dreaded 40 degree slope. Not many tanks can. In fact, I've only ever managed to climb it with purpose built designs. I can get an ordinary tank to climb the 35, and the 30 is standard for me. But that 40 degree, that 5 degrees of difference between 35 and 40, seems to make, well, all the difference. So, as it stands, the creatively named medium tank 30, M30, cannot climb the 40 degree slope. In fact, I'm not sure what this tank can climb. I've not really tested it, I just know it can't climb the 40, as we shall observe. Now when we say can it climb the slope, I'm going to be using the same metric that I use when I'm judging tank design competitions, which is to line up the front of the hole, like this, with the slope, and then go from there. We didn't get very far. We might be able to do better with a run-up, but we will eventually run out of steam and not be able to climb the slope. So that explains to you what the aim of the challenge is. Now, we don't want to do anything to this tank that's going to change its combat capabilities. We want to know that it's still perfectly capable of completing scenarios. So, as I built it, this tank can't even climb the 30. Can we climb the 25? In case it's not obvious, the real purpose of this video is to discuss the techniques within Sprocket that make a tank better at hill climbing. Oh dear, we have a long way to go with the M30. It can't even climb the 25. Let's hope we can climb the 20. If we can't, then we really are in big trouble. Bear in mind, however, absolutely no effort was made to make this tank climb when it was built. I just strapped on a gun and the right amount of armor that I would need to win the scenarios. All the hill climbing work happens now. Let's get back into the builder. Now, I have picked up things during my time in Sprocket and judging tank design competitions in Sprocket. It doesn't mean I know everything about how hill climbing works in this game. It is a little bit unique, a little bit not what you would expect. It's also changing all the time as Hamish develops the game, and I don't have any secret insights from him as the developer as to what factors influence hill climbing. Now, obviously, weight and power to weight ratio have a huge effect on your ability to climb a hill. If we were to give this tank a massive engine or strip all the armor off it, then it would probably be able to climb the hill. But we want to keep the tank more or less as it is. How can we make this tank design better at climbing? So the first thing we're going to do is talk about grip. Grip is obviously essential for climbing. If you don't have enough of it, your tracks will just slide in place. What isn't particularly obvious is how you get more grip in Sprocket. The tracks in Sprocket are actually somewhat ephemeral. You'll notice that the terrain clips through them, and they don't, as it happens, transfer traction to the ground or power from the engine to the ground. That's done by the road wheels here. The more you have of them, and the larger their surface area in contact with the ground, the more grip and traction 
you have. First things first then, we'll go to the mobility tab, we'll go to our tracks and we will have a look at our road wheels. Currently we have two per axle. They are of 0.1 meters width and they're quite large. There's only six of them per side. One of the ways we can imp improve our traction and therefore our hill climbing I know is to increase the width. Let's go for 0.15 meters. Now that obviously increases our weight and therefore makes our power to weight ratio worse. So with all of these things there's a balancing act to be struck. Let's see if that's improved our hill climbing ability. Now before we were only able to climb the 20 degree slope with this tank. Let's see if we can make it climb the 25 now. Okay here goes. Almost. Improving the engine would help with that but we don't have a lot of space. We could reduce the weight but doing that might impact our combat performance. Let's see if there's something else we can't do first. Let's have a play around with the gearing. At the moment our lowest gear is 4. I happen to know that the crawler gear on the Sherman tank was more around the 6 in terms of a gear ratio. So let's try that and see if that helps us to climb at all. Again, larger gear ratios mean larger gearboxes which means larger weight and therefore a worse power to weight ratio. So just sticking a whole bunch of gears on here also isn't necessarily going to help our hill climbing. As with the one ton tank quest, I haven't tested this. I've just made a tank that can complete the scenarios and now I'm trying to work out how I'm going to make it climb. So that didn't seem to help us as much as we might have hoped. But we are almost managing to hold ourselves on the hill. It's sometimes find that a tank climbs better in its second gear. What if we make that three? Oh, so close. Let's try that one again. So second gear almost carries us, but we do slip down into one. I'm not sure that making the first gear a shorter ratio will help any more than we've already had, but we can try. This may have made it worse. Yeah, that did make it worse. About seven three two. I've changed third gear because I noticed that we started the climb in third gear. Now we made it to the top there. We only stopped because we lost, as you see, the front axle loses traction because it loses contact with the ground, which means that we have less road wheels less surface area in contact, in contact with the ground and in this game as we said the road wheels are what give you the traction so that makes sense. One way of getting around that would be to have more road wheels per side, smaller road wheels, say half a meter for the road wheel diameter, five, six, seven, eight, nine per side. That should be a significant improvement I think. Let's test that out. That significantly increased the number of road wheels we've got in contact with the ground and therefore the surface area in contact with the ground. It also will mean that when we get to the top we may still have enough traction even though the first set have lost contact with the ground. And sure enough, climbing the 25 is now very easy. What about the 30 then? We're losing speed. We almost made it. See, when it drops down into first gear, it loses all of its momentum. How can we avoid that? Ah, look. That's a mistake by me. Huh. Let's set this up properly. That might help us. I should also have taken a closer look at our engine for you so that we knew what we're working with. What we've currently got installed is a... 16 litre V8, which at its maximum RPM produces 600 horsepower. We're going to try and retain that engine.
changing the RPM values hasn't done anything for our hill climbing, unfortunately. What if we try and keep the RPMs higher? If we set our target minimum to only something like 2,600, so that we can keep the power, because obviously the higher in your RPM, the more power output you're actually getting from your engine. If you're letting your RPM drop to only half revs, then you've only got around about half the power. But we are not making headway in first gear. Perhaps we need more traction. There are a couple of ways that we can further increase traction. The least intuitive of these is to increase the thickness of the tracks. You wouldn't think that this would make much difference to the actual traction, at least not on a hard surface. These great spades would obviously be very grippy in the mud, but on concrete you'd think that that might actually be worse. It also adds a considerable amount of weight, so we don't want to go overboard. By default your vehicle starts at 0.07. Increasing that even to 0.1 could make a difference. Let's see how it climbs now. That made a huge difference to our climbing grip. I was misdiagnosing the problem. I thought that it was our engine power that was wanting, but it was traction, putting that power down. Thickening up those tracks really helped. We zoomed up there at nearly 4 miles an hour, I think. Let's try that again. It was satisfying. Yep, second gear over oh, 5 miles an hour. Not bad at all for such a relatively minor tweak. I'm feeling confident now. We might even be able to do the 35. Let's try it. Seems my confidence was misplaced. We're also starting to struggle to get the climb, get the tank onto the slope. We end up with a lot of road wheels off the ground about this point here, and it's possible even to get stuck. This is why you want your suspension to be supple. To an extent, our suspension already is. You'll see that when we're in build mode, the skirts come to just above the wheel hubs here. But when we're spawned in, it sinks down by a few inches. That means that our suspension is going to move outwards as we go over a depression in the ground and try and keep the track, or in this case the road wheels because the track doesn't matter, but it's going to keep the wheels in contact with the ground by moving into any depressions in the ground or, as it happens, the, the gap that forms when you try to go up these sharp angles. Our rest angle is a big factor here, but that's already maximized so that we have the most range of travel. But we could soften the suspension. The issue we might have then is that we end up touching ground with the skirts, but we could remove those. They're not going to significantly affect the combat performance, especially since we're playing with aesthetic applique armor on. To soften the torsion bars, we can just reduce their diameter. Let's reduce it down to, I don't know, 36? You can see the tank sinks much lower now once it's spawned in, but that the wheels have much further to travel in the downwards direction. Now getting onto the 35 was was doable with the previous setup and we still couldn't climb it so it's not going to fix the climbing but it might make getting onto it feel a little easier as it does a worthwhile step. What else can we do? Well let's make sure we've maximized our traction first. As we said widening the road wheels, increasing the number of road wheels on each side and thickening the tracks all improve traction. So too does widening the track width. This is a relatively new aspect of designing tanks in Sprocket. Until recent versions of the game, the width of the tracks had no bearing on the traction, only the thickness. But it was recently discovered that track width does now have an effect. Now changing this is going to mess up our design but it's probably time to lose the side skirts anyway. Let's increase our track width to 0.65 and we'll get rid of those skirts because they're in the way and they're not helping us climb and they don't really impact 
our fighting performance at all either. Okay, let's try it now. Of course, widening the tracks also makes the tank heavier, so almost all of these changes we make, as we've said, is harming our power to weight ratio. This could eventually come back to bite us. Oh, I forgot to take those spades off, but never mind. The tank is just too heavy to climb this slope. Well, we've got 800 litres of fuel here, we don't need that much to complete any any scenario in the game. I mean, we can probably drop that to 300, that'll save us some weight. It's also saved us some internal space, so we could upgrade the engine if we feel we need to. There's going to be a lot of driving backwards and forwards to these slopes in this video. I will probably edit most of it out. Give it another go. Better even that small amount of weight loss really improved how far we got up the slope there. What else could we afford to lose weight with? The transmission is already as light as it can be because we're using clutch braking rather than a twin transmission. We could soften the suspension further, that would save us a small amount of weight by reducing the size of the torsion bars. We don't want to reduce the size of the engine because we need all of that power. We've already reduced fuel. Let's have a look at the weight breakdowns. Armor's pretty thick. Tracks also take up a lot of weight because we now have fairly wide, fairly chunky tracks, but we want those for the grip that they provide. There's not a lot else that we can do other than reducing the armor, but that would then impact our combat performance, which is something we decided we don't want to do. There is always, however, the smoothing trick. If we switch the hole into freeform mode and go to edit options and apply the smoothing angle, we end up shaving, what was that? 31.38 goes down to just 28.3 tons. I don't know if this is intentional or if it will stay this way for any length of time in the game, but for now, it seems like a no-brainer if we ever want to get up that 40 degree slope. The turret has less of an effect, but still every kilogram counts. Let's see how we climb now that we're weighing nearly th oh, there's three tons less. Oh, go on. See, that was so close until we lost traction at the top. What can we do? What can we do? Maybe the answer is just more road wheels. Maximum road wheelage. Because they're so small, it doesn't vastly affect... Oh, we sit very low to the ground now, though. Now, because they're so small, it hasn't made a... Whee, look at them go. A huge effect on the weight. It, it does now mean that we might not be able to climb onto the slope because we'll just ground out on the idler. No, no, no. Got grip for days. Look at this. So, it seems that grip is really the defining factor. So much more than engine power and gearing. This tank makes the 35 look easy. But what about the 40? Like I said before, I've managed to climb the 35 plenty of times, but the 40 is just a completely different beast. It just can't even get enough road wheels in contact with the slope to even start climbing it. How can we do that without impacting combat performance? I think the major thing is getting those road wheels on the ground, even as we go up that very sharp angle. To do that, I want the hull and the specifically the idler to be higher. I could just drag the idler up, but we're not increasing the ground clearance. It's the ground clearance that we want to improve. Now we've already swapped it into freeform mode, so that becomes easier because we can just hit the A button to select the whole hull and just, well, move the hull up. Okay, that looks quite ridiculous now in the design mode, but when it compresses, it actually looks alright. Okay, oh, I still need to get rid of those stupid spades. Let's look at it from this side. Yes, 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 we've got enough wheels on. We didn't make it up, but we got enough wheels on. 
we might be able to do this because we haven't we haven't negatively impacted the combat performance of the vehicle at all. I'm excited now. I've not done this before, as I said. But we've actually got the the grip to hold it there. So maybe now we are running up against. No, the no, we don't have the no. I'm. What am I talking about? It's not. We don't. We we don't have enough grip. The tracks are slipping. The engine is, is still going, the engine's powerful enough. It's the, the, the tracks that are slipping. Come on, come on, you can do it, yes. Yep. The engine's the engine's game. The gearbox is ga is is us up for it. We're just slipping. Okay, okay, okay. Well I guess we thicken the tracks, that had a significant impact before. Let's try 0.12 and maybe we can increase the width of the road wheels just a touch more without adding too much weight. That actually fits our tracks better now. Go via the bumps this time so we can hypnotize ourselves with those tiny road wheels doing their thing. Oh, so slinky. Let's do this. Oh, it's holding steady, kind of, slipping back down again. Ah, that didn't have the uh, impact I hoped it would. Okay, let's really double down on the road wheels. We'll reduce the spacing on axle and increase the width. Okay, we're driving on rolling pins now. Sliding and sliding. What can we do? What can we do? Do we just go crazy? Do we just make the tracks into spades? That makes it so heavy though. Look at the spikes on the front spare tracks. That's pretty nifty actually. Oh come on. That shouldn't mean that you can't suddenly can't even get on the slope. Is the extra weight too much now? Okay, come on! You can do it. Climb that hill. No. No, the extra track thickness didn't help at all. So let's get rid of it. What to do, what to do. If we make the sprocket smaller, that effectively changes the gearing and should make it climb better. This may have no impact on the climbing at all. No, we need more grip, more grip, more grip. Do we just make the tracks really wide? Like really, really wide? They can they can become quite wide in Sprocket. That's obviously hugely increased the weight. Let's, just, let's go mad. Stupid, stupid fall. Four, four deep road wheels as well. You wanted grip. I'll give you grip. This is now the tank equivalent of a monster truck. The, the weight could be crippling at this point. Can we squeeze an extra road wheel on by reducing the spacing? Yeah, I think we might have got an axle or two out of that. It's just not helping. Interleaving is, uh, with maximum overlap is a great way to get more road wheels on the ground in a normal design. We probably should have tried that earlier. Now we're going to do it with these super ridiculous tracks. I said that we had to make a design that could climb the 40 without negatively impacting its combat performance. I didn't say it had to look sensible or good. Perhaps these great wings will carry me up the slope. Nope. I think we just added too much weight now. At this point I'm persuaded that weight is the enemy. So we're going to reduce down the width of the tracks back to where we were. 
We're going to try and maximize our road wheels by keeping them interleaved but reducing the number per axle to two so that we can still have the maximum number of axles on there and we'll make them an appropriate width. Go little tank. No joy. Well, we do have some internal space. Maybe it's finally time to upgrade the engine. Do we have room for an extra pair of cylinders? Yes, we do. We almost have room for four extra cylinders. We don't want to impact our driver because I think his efficiency is important. But we've got a radio man in here. He doesn't need all that space. He's being greedy. We've not changed the gearing, so the, uh, the bigger engine is not really affecting our top speed, but it should give us more grunt to get up this hill. Guess what I've still not removed? Next time we go back to the build area, I will remember to take off those spades. It still feels like it's the grip that's the problem, not the power. I'm not sure that the reduced sprocket size actually helped much. But I don't like it, so I'm going to put it back to where it was. It does occur to me that there's no point having a big idler. That's just taking up space. This looks absurd. And don't ask me how this works. But let's try it anyway. No, sorry, Mr. Radio Man. You're gonna have to breathe in a little more. Ooh, oh, that's not doing good things at all. <laughs> the front of the tracks there. But it's certainly gonna mean that we get uh, plenty of road wheels on the slope. Are we just too heavy? What if we had larger road wheels? Because all of these sets, of, look, there's 31 tons. All these sets of suspension are adding weight. 29.96 seems like a happy medium. It does actually seem to grip better too. Curious. Perhaps the biggest factor here, which should make sense, is just weight. Weight is the enemy. Our big engine adds weight, so do we actually need that extra engine power? Is it helping us at all? Here goes nothing. I am finally remembering to take those pesky spades off. Okay. I think the extra power did seem to help, but torque. Torque is what's going to drag us up the hill. And for that you want big cylinders. Not more of them, big cylinders over a thousand horsepower. It still fits, it's pushed us over 30 tons though. Let's see if that extra torque makes a difference. We've got more than twice the torque now. I think we do need the, the many road wheels back. I do think they were helping. Maybe not quite that many. Go on, 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 go on. Why are you in third? We can force it to stay in first gear by adopting a twin transmission. And then if we rapidly tap A and D as we're climbing, that will keep it in first gear on both. Keep it in first. <laughs> so close. If we go back to maximum road wheels, at this point, Radio Man, you're out of a job. We'll give the radio to the loader or something. Why? Why do you not want to go up there anymore? Oh, I'm struggling. More grip, but not more weight. Does, does this actually do anything? What to do, what to do, what to do? Shave off that tiny fraction of weight. Ah, getting rid of the return rollers actually adds weight in this context. But we can uh, maximize the spacing and forward slider so that there is only there can be only one. What? is going on. 
latest and greatest technology in hill climbing. Oh, 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 oh! I think that counts. I think that counts, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's never gonna make it over the... Why does it now not work? That's cruel. That's... that's cruel. That's so cruel. Go back to clutch braking. Maybe the twin transmission isn't helping. Go on, go on, go on. That's upsetting. That's upsetting. I'm offended. Is this sheer amount of track thickness actually doing anything? Still having special times at the front there. That's a harder. <laughs> Come on, this time. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yes, you can overkill on the track thickness. Did you see that? Because <laughs> at this point, I could be hallucinating. Come on, come on, come on, don't be a fluke, don't be a fluke, don't be a fluke. <sighs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So the lesson that we have learned is that you need to get your, your tracks to do this, whatever this is, and this will make it climb the 40 degree. I'm, I'm sure it's not that. I'm sure it's got more to do with the fact that we've found a sweet spot of number of road wheels and width of road wheels and width of track and track thickness. It seemed that we had too much track thickness there. There may be a sweet spot, maybe 0.1 meters thick is the sweet spot. Or maybe it was just the fact that we just needed to reduce the weight. This this slider definitely affects traction. We saw that very clearly at the beginning. Too little thickness and we, we didn't have enough traction. Increasing the number of road wheels, we number of axles on each side, we definitely saw helped. So did increasing the width. I'm still skeptical as to whether the width of the tracks really makes that much difference. I suppose there's an easy way to test that. Keep everything else the same, including the rod wheels, but minimize the belt width. What happens now? Hmm. See, I was told that track width had an effect by a reliable source. If it does, it's largely largely negligible compared to everything else because well because of this but if we reduce the thickness of the tracks that should definitely have an effect on our traction we sh we showed that earlier but I'm just, I'm, I'm starting to doubt everything I know. But we still made it up. We left road wheels behind. No road wheel left behind. Catapults ourselves up. E twang. My goodness, that worked. Now I'm confused. Why is it still working? This shouldn't work. Why did that work? Why did that work? Is number of road wheels the superior factor? Or is it just that we've got a really powerful engine now? What if we go back to the 8-cylinder engine? The 8-cylinder engine definitely couldn't climb the slope earlier, right? I'm not imagining that. This shouldn't work. Phew! Something that shouldn't work doesn't work. Good. Can the 8-cylinder engine do it? If the tracks are what we would consider based on 
previously accepted logic to be better. It's gone for half meter wide tracks with modestly wider road wheels. Okay, good. So those things that we established that affect hill climbing do affect hill climbing. We saw that thin tracks with minimum width road wheels couldn't climb it with the 8 cylinder engine. But by increasing the thickness width of the tracks and the width of the road wheels we could. So we know those factors do definitely, definitely affect grip. Okay, now diagnosis time. We need to work out who's doing most of the work. So, back to where it was before. Minimum belt thickness, minimum belt width, minimum width road wheels. With the 5 litre per cylinder, 8 cylinder engine. Can't do it. It definitely can't do it. It's close, but it can't do it. Okay, that's our benchmark. Right. What if we increase the belt thickness to 0 0.1? Does that make the difference? It made the difference for us before. Hmm. No. Okay, so it actually got stuck at more or less the same point. Okay, belt width. Let's make that. Sure, 0.59. It's so nearly there that if we improve its hill climbing ability with any one of these factors, even slightly, that should make the difference. No, belt width didn't do it either. Back to minimum. Road wheel width then. Perhaps road wheels really are just that powerful. No, no, they're not. That doesn't work. Then, is there some complex symbiosis here? Okay, so we add the road wheels to thicker tracks, but we'll keep them minimum width. I'm genuinely intrigued. That was closer, but no banana. Okay, so if we give the belt some width? I think there is. I think there is a symbiosis between those three factors. This will prove it. There is. There is, there is, there is. In isolation, any one of those factors wasn't enough to make it climb, but put them together, more road wheels, surface area in contact with the ground, thicker tracks and wider tracks, and we got up there. Can we remove any one factor just to confirm that? Let's get rid of the track thickness maybe? If this now doesn't work, then we have confirmed the symbiosis of those three factors. Doesn't work. Wow. So there you have it. The secret to hill climbing more road wheels, wider road wheels, some belt thickness, but you don't necessarily need too much, and then track width, belt width, you need some. You can get by without it if you've got a really powerful engine, and these two are good, but with a less powerful engine we were able to get it up the 40 by having the belt width in there as well. Fascinating. The other important thing to remember is to get actually onto the slope to keep the wheels in contact with the ground. You need that supple springy suspension. Watch it drop. Watch the wheels drop as it goes off the ramps there. That's really important too. So there you have it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, despite its uncomfortable frontal appearance, here is a 30 ton late war medium tank that is capable of finishing the end game scenarios with victories, because we've not changed any of its combat capability at all, 
and it can also climb the dreaded 40 degree incline. Well, there you have it. I've been T, your friendly neighbourhood Sprocket subreddit moderator, and this has been 40 Degrees of Desperation, the quest to climb the 40 degree slope. I hope it was helpful. Until the next one, take care out there.